Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about religion and popular culture. And we're going to do it through looking at um, African religion and Chinese religion. I, I'll just be going over them briefly, um, but you can still write about them for your papers. But I'm going to look at these religions in terms of modern representations or um, perpetuations of them, um, which may or may not be good representations of them or perpetuations of them, but they can start to form new religious movements. So we'll look at a little bit of that. And um, so I want to start with um, a hip hop artist named African Bambada. And he, uh, he goes by um, Shango. That is his alias. And um, so he he actually uh, st was one of the founders of hip hop, started the Zulu Nation. Um, so we're gonna watch a couple clips. You can see he's dressed in some African um, style, you know, clothing. And, um, and we'll talk a little bit about Bambada and hip hop, and then also, you know, look at sort of the origins of some of the um, symbols and um, gods that are represented. when we look at the Yoruba people, um, they were modern, uh, in modern Nigeria, sub-Saharan Africa. Um, it's the Oyo kingdom. Um, and Shango is the king of Oyo. Um, the beliefs predate Oyo, which is a kingdom from, uh, you know, about 1200 to 1800 CE. Um, so, uh, King Shango of Oyo, um, is a warlike tyrant. He has a, a double-headed axe, which is a symbol for the thunderbolt. And, um, when smoke, so smoke comes out of his mouth. And he is a, um, like Baal, like Yahweh, 
um, the Hebrew God, like Zeus, he is a storm God. Um, so, but more specifically, a God of lightning. So lightning storms are frequent in the Oyo Empire. So um, this makes sense for, you know, this region. Um, and uh, so storm God, God of thunder, animal, God of lightning, uh, animal sacrifice, Intercession is through the possession of the vo the devotee, um, through dreams or through divination. So these are similar things we see in the Hawaiian tradition, a, a solid dream culture. Um, and again, here is Bambada. And um, here is uh, some of the lyrics to the song. So... Um, it starts by saying Shang Go. Isn't it a wonder we are the gun and thunder or we are the gods of thunder. Um, we are on the same mission. Come on, everybody listen. People across the nation who thinks they have imagination. Everybody wants to see you groove and cause your frantic body to move. It's a frantic situation. Um, and then the chorus, thunder and lightning from Shang Go. Feel the force. Thunder and lightning from Shango. We are the force. Um, and the knowledge, use the power, speak the truth. There's nothing to lose. We are Shango. Do you want to tango? Thunder and lightning from Shango. So, um, yeah, you know, he is capturing part of Shango. Um, I don't know if uh, his depiction of Shango in the dress is um, accurate. Uh, it's pretty cool though, especially those shades. Um, I have some of those. I'm not sure about the thing he's carrying. That doesn't look like a double-headed axe, but maybe it is. Um, and so African Mabata starts the Zulu nation. It's in Kawa Zulu, which means the place of Zulu. Um. And uh, migrants from the north to South Africa. Um, and it's a Bantu speaking language. Um, and each tribe has their own distinct language. And um, Shaka Zulu was the chief. And there's much written about the Zulu people. So maybe this is why Bambada chose that for the name of his um, organization, which is the Universal Zulu Nation. Uh, it's a hip hop um, organization that there's chapters all around the globe, including one here in Hawaii. Um, it is uh, it is what hip hop is. It's MCs or rappers, b boys or breakers, graffiti artists, uh, beat boxer, beatboxers, and DJs. Um, so, um, so yeah, I'll let you go through those. You know, there's a lot of the Zulus really stood up to um, the British, uh, and there's there's a lot out there on the Zulu. Um, it means heaven heard. Um, and they have some control over elements of of nature, sky. Izulu means sky. Um, they're called by the lightning bolt, and um, ancestors are under the ground and are the ground. So similar to Hawaii, right? Gods are in the sky and they are the sky. Um, the priest and the headmen are responsible for ritual acts of all Zulu especially as they relate to the ancestors. Um, sickness and suffering may be blamed on lack of respect towards the elders. Uh, there's herbalist, so, but the medicine is passed from father to son. Um, and new medical systems and solutions are also incorporated. Um, the divine, diviner or the divination, the sorcerer are mainly women, um, often accused of using... Amandala, I don't know if I got that right, um, magic uh, for evil ends. So, um, but they diagnose misfortunes and provide solutions to human problems. 
um, and they're chosen through visions or dreams designed by the ancestors. There's a number of Zulu proverbs. Um, the way forward is to ask from those who have gone before. Abundance does not spread, famine does. No sun sets without its histories. I am a person through other people. My humanity is tied to yours. Um, so this is the concept of Ubuntu. A person is only a person because of other people. And um, Ubuntu kind of means I am because we are. Um, in order to be a person, we need other people. And um, it's really about relationships and reciprocity. Um, living together harmoniously so that um, you can contact the divine. Um, and suppressing yourself for sort of the extended ohana or or tribe. And um, Ubuntu is a, a philosophy that is, you know, is has been there for a long time, but it really uh, developed during the apartheid. So it is questioned, you know, sometimes by people, whether it's just a sort of a resistance philosophy, but many people in South Africa say, no, it, it's really our philosophy and, um, and, and it's, it's kind of beautiful. Um, but something that perhaps is taken on by hip hop with their mantra being peace, unity, love, and having fun. This picture is one I took in New York City. I went to the 50th anniversary of hip hop celebration this summer in August uh, at 1520 Sedgwick in the Bronx. Um, here's some of the original members of the Zulu nation. Um, and we kind of have to think about is hip hop a religion? Um, uh, you know, it has the Zulu Nation. It has something called the Temple of Hip Hop, um, the Hip Hop Church, the Hip Hop Unity Flag. So here is the Peace, Unity, Love, and Having Fun. This flag was created so that all the colors are side by side with each other. Um, we have Hip Hop Appreciation Week. Um, there is a Hip Hop Declaration of Peace that is recognized at the UN because KRS-One from the Temple of Hip Hop um, and some others from the Zulu Nation and um, um, some, you know, hip hop founders went and asked to be accepted um, into the UN and recognized. Um, and it does have symbols, right? So um, these are just some of my things, you know, are the sneakers we wear, Pumas with the fat laces which you know the styles change from place to place but um there are some pretty standards in the origins the name plates the graffiti you know graffiti on the um clothing and um you know just just a general style uh we get new names as hip-hop people so mine is lanesky um we have founders we have prophets we have creeds we have beliefs we have myths, we have uh, origin myths. Um, and that's why I went to the 50th anniversary of hip hop, um, because that is the origin myth of hip hop. So it doesn't mean it's not true. It's definitely true. Um, but, uh, you know, every religion has to sort of have that origin that explains not only, you know, the beginning of the religion, but the beliefs, the create the creeds, how it got started. And um, so hip hop actually, you know, probably orig originated in a lot of places in New York City. Some people say it even started outside of New York City, but it came from a guy named um, Cool Herc. Um, this is the myth. Um, he had a block party, a back to school block party in the Bronx. And he was DJing there with the two turntables. Um, and he had his new technique called the merry-go-round so many and there were already dancers um there was already the house scene which was you know supposedly started in 1970 at the loft with david mancuso another origin myth but it was this culture of djing 
And it's interesting because with hip hop, it's really race and bringing people together um, for house music. It's really, um, that was the, really the beginning of the LGBTQ movement because um, the loft started when gays used to go to underground clubs because they weren't allowed to show affection in public. So they started their own underground clubs and one of the main clubs got um, raided and it started a big riot and they closed it down. So then they started the loft. And so it was very much a part of that movement. And both of these cultures are very much DJ cultures and they, they take from each other and they even um, are found in a lot of the similar type you know, funk Latin music and um, DJ techniques that really, uh, really under underscore a lot of our music today. So um, it's really important. And, um, but there really is a Zulu culture. Uh, there's, a, if you go, I've actually been to Zululand. I went to South Africa for a surfing contest. And so um, there's a village. Um, you have these special um, types of houses, which are now influence modern structures. Um, so, you know, um, sort of round homes um, that do perpetuate that idea of a circle of unity. Um, And so let's um, look at one other thing in the African tradition. We're going to look at, you know, Bob Marley. He was the Rastafari religion, which is a religion. Um, and many of them believe that um, uh, they they pull from this verse in Psalms, Ethiopia shall again stretch forth her hands unto God, Psalm sixty eight thirty one. So um, we also see this in early African American literature. Some of the very first uh, scripts written by people like Prince Hall in seventeen eighty seven, who sees um, identifies Jethro in the Moses story. Um, as Moses's father, um, as Moses and father-in-law, he he says that you know that was an Ethiopian that was concerted, uh, converted by the disciple Philip of Sheba. So, um, in 1829, Ethiopian in the Ethiopian Manifesto, um, another African American uh, writing. Um, we see that a similar thing. So they're connecting um, themselves to the chosen people um, at the at the time we're believing Christianity. Um, and we do have Ethiopian Jews. So um, some say the Beta Israel, maybe the Israelite Tan tribe of Dan. They may be descendants of Minalik. Or one, or the son of King Solomon and Queen Sheba. Um, of course, Solomon had like a thousand wives, so I guess you know maybe a lot of us are related to him. <laughs> and then, so they may be descendants of Ethiopian Christians and pagans who converted to Judaism years ago. They may be descendants of Jews who fled Israel for Egypt after the destruction of the first temple in five eighty six. And settled in Ethiopia. We don't really know. We just know there's these Ethiopian Jews. Um, so in the Rastafari tradition, they believe Haile Selassie um, came is is the Messiah that was expected in Christianity. That um, that Jesus did come again, and um, so and that was Haile Selassie, um, and um, yeah. So that is the sort of foundation of that religion. And while many people sort of look at uh, Bob Marley as a, a, a herb smoking clown, I'm sorry to say, um, he he sang the songs of freedom. His his music and his lyrics are 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 very um, complex, you know, and they do explain the religion, but they also explain 
the problems in in you know that culture at the time um in jamaica and you know so sm herb smoker or not you know he had two prime ministers on the stage together holding hands um so you know this would be an interesting thing to write about for a final paper any of those would um, you could do the hip-hop or you could do um Rastafari religion and I'm not even getting into um the nation of Islam um which is uh a whole nother thing and uh yeah I just don't have I don't want to overwhelm you guys with too much but I will show you um I'll show you here's the the universal Sulu nation website um you can see is very um religious oriented um and comes across much as a, a religion um and you know uh african babada did uh he was accused of uh child molestation so he is sort of not recognized much anymore in the culture. Um, he was never prosecuted, but they sort of just, you know, he, he's no longer the leader of the Zulu nation. But you can see they have the Moors, um, and there's really a lot of syncretism. So you have Islam and Christianity, groups like the Moors are included in um, the Zulu nation. And we also have the Nuwapian religion, which or the Nuwapian nation, which sort of uh, uh, also was uh, <laughs> knocked out because its founder, Dwight Work, was accused of child molestation. So, and you know, um, many, you know, I don't, I don't want to put these down because they're African American groups. Um, uh, so many new, new religious movements, whether they're Hindu or uh, anything else Christian they do have a lot of this types of um, you know sexual kind of issues because the the leader you know the charismatic leader gets so much power in the group um, but in the Nuwapian tradition they combined like things in ancient uh, uh, ancient Egypt they see themselves as um, being united to the Moors and the ancient Egyptian traditions and um, Muslim theology, uh, UFO religions, which is something that you also see in the nation of Islam. Um, so yeah, um, this they used to have a website, but it got taken down. So yeah, you can see um, the religion, knowledge, science. You know, so you could do anything like this. Um, yeah, so here's uh, some of the some of the beliefs, some of the religious um, things that are here. And uh, yeah, look at all that. So this would be a fun project if you're interested in this. This is when I went to Africa, got to go to the game parks. Super cool. If you ever get a chance. It's 63% Christian. Um, so I'm just going to kind of punch through these. Uh, trickster gods, witch doctors, rainmakers. Uh, we saw the rainmakers even in the Hebrew tradition with Honi. Um, it's called cosmogonies, several of them. Um, they do have the same the sound yo, uh, that brought life into being, sort of like Om. Yo called three creator gods into being. And you have some other gods, Orishas, Olaran. I also just wanted to point out that the Ankh is uh, the sign of the Zulu nation. 
Um, so, and it's used actually by the Christian Coptic tradition, um, which is the Egyptian tradition. It means life or eternal life. Um, so yeah, you can see the crossover. We have that, you know, from Egyptian religion that goes into Christianity and then even the hip hop Zulu tradition as a new religious movement. So another thing we can look at is uh, something like the Mandalorian, which is a modern, you know, part of the Star Wars series, a modern Star Wars series. And it's called, and, and its main mantra is, this is the way, this is the way, which is interesting. Um, what is the way, you know, so this could be a project, this could be a final project, this going back and looking at all the clips and the times that the Mandalorian says this is the way and trying to find out what the way is. We can look at Star Wars, the Wikipedia, and um, we can find out who the Mandalorians are, which is important because actually they used to battle the Jedi. And if you know the series and the story, um, now um the mandalorian is has adopted this um uh yoda baby yoga ba baby yoda called grogu um into his clan and um you know it, it says the mandalorians were a clan-based culture composed of members from multi multiple species bound by a common creed and language but if you watch the film you know there's two different groups that disagree and uh, well, I won't tell you if you haven't watched it but you guys know if you know um they're also bounty hunters um and then you can look up what the way is so this is the wikipedia this would be a credible source if you were gonna do this um also uh, so you know the mandalore also known as the way of the mandalore was a religion founded by you know it tells you this and it kind of tells you about what it is so you could use this um to determine what the way is um there's other things online there's codes uh so you're supposed to have five sources i've already given you two um and then you could actually look at christianity right? Because we know in Christianity, they were originally called the way. And here's a source I quickly found um, that talks about, you know, Christianity and the way. Um, this author basically says um, that it was, you know, originally thought as a way of life. Uh, so that's why it, it was a distinctive way of life. But that we know that Jesus called our early Christians, Jesus called himself the way. Um, of course, this is uh, suspected to be a much later writing. We just don't know if that the context that it's put in would be the that way. Um, uh, of course, uh, most Christians believe it was inspired. Um, but maybe the two can go together, right? So that's another thing you could, you could talk about the Mandalorian's way and the Christian way and see if there's any similarities. Is this modern series trying to bring out, um, you know, things in, in, in religion to uh, take us into a, a modern context? Is he using religions commonly known and accepted to promote his uh, film? Or is he trying to challenge these old concepts with new ones? So we also see this in the movie Star Wars, uh, which with the Force, and I've included a few clips for you if you wanted to look at the Force. And, um, you know, um, George Lucas, the original, you know, director, producer of the series, um, he pretty much built the idea of the Force uh, from the life force of the of all religions so he saw it as a way to 
pull a, a concept from all religions um, to to focus on you know something in a film and to very much challenge it um, good versus evil which as the shows which started in 1978 uh, the prequels and then the sequels um, have you know challenged very much the context of the time some of the characters the stormtroopers and things as such are represented as um, um, Nazis uh, things like that he built some of his he actually did research in religion um, Joseph Campbell uh, his research on um, to 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 form you know some of these concepts so i have those down there you can you can look at that um but we also have this in chinese religions so if we look at taoism um oh we have lao laozi the the old master um and he's traditionally regarded as the chinese taoist philosopher of the 6th century bce who authored the Tao Te Ching. Um, so there's nothing n really known about his life or identity. But um, the Tao Te Ching um, is, is the way. Um, the idea of the Tao is this is the way um, and Wu Wei. So no action. So not a complete absence of action, but taking the least action possible. There's sort of maybe the idea of going with the flow. So um, the Tao that can be trodden is not the enduring Tao. The name that can be named is not the enduring name. The nameless is the origin of heaven and earth. The named is the mother of myriad things. Um, so it has some opposition to Confucianism, which is... Uh, the former um, tradition in China. And um, so you had the folk tradition and then the Taoist tr tradition and Confucianism. Then you had Buddhism coming in and new religions. So um, Confucian Confucianism was a dominant philosophy through most of its history. Um, that encompasses religion, political thought, ethical thought, and literature. So it's the basis for the Chinese political and educational system. So it has concepts of the divine. So the Shang Di, the God on High, the Supreme God, and the Tian, literally the heaven, um, the Supreme God. You have the Yin and the Yang. So I know you guys have probably heard of that before, and you know the town and country signal. Sign, uh, symbol um, but you can see you know negative and positive passive and active weak strong submissive dominant um, balance harmony um, pono maybe um, there's Chinese divination through or oracle bones and casting hexagrams things like that um, the five elements water fire wood metal earth there's ancestor veneration and Confucius. So he was also a philosopher. Um, he's the founder. And he advocated for the moral reform of society through proper training of individuals as honest and compassionate government officials. Here's the five classic Confucius books. The Triad of the Cosmos. And the Mandate of Heaven. Um... The five fundamental relationships. Um, and then the Confucius worldviews, which is um, says that we're all the same, but become separated by habit. Um, and uh, Mencius, another philosopher, says that humans are generally good. But um, Zunzi argues that um, human nature is evil. So some differentiation here. So the difference between Taoism and Confucianism, um, Confucianism is more about moral and rational, whereas Taoism or Taoism is natural and spontaneous. Uh, Confucianism promotes self, 
cultivation, whereas Taoism promotes creativity, um, social structure versus rejection of structure, bright virtue versus um, Tao is dark and shadowy. So it's kind of like, um, you know, maybe the Hawaiian pole. Um, I don't mean to like connect these, they may be very different, but just sort of reminding you of some of the other concepts we brought up throughout the semester. So, um, you know, um, the Tao, right? So you could talk about the Mandalorian the way, and you could look at Taoism, and you could, or you could look at Christianity, or you could look at both and talk about this new film as a sort of a new religious movement. Um, there is uh, the Je people that uh, see, see themselves as Jedi. Um, that's their religion. So um, very brief on Chinese religions. Um, uh, Buddhism, of course, a, a big uh, part of Chinese religion. After that, um, but I'm not going to go into that today. And so um, I want you to think about popular culture. You can take these examples. I also put an example of Star Trek. You could look at the Borg. You could look at the concept of Vulcans, which is, you know, they're really focused on logic. Uh, of course, you can look at the way science replaces religion as a way to find meaning in science fiction. Um, but I think the Vulcan is really interesting, especially with the character Spock, who is half human, half Vulcan, and really uh, looks at, you know, logic versus relationships. And, we, and it, you know, it has some similarities to what we were looking at with, you know, Judaism and Christianity and the law, which is the law, but it's also relational and it's about bringing community together and things like that. So you can look at that. Um, you can look at um, the Fuji cult in the Indiana Mo Jones movie, and that's a, a Hindu, a Hindu um, offshoot uh, or representation, and <laughs> not a very good one. Um, and there's a lot of other things you could look at. So I'm not limiting you to these. You can choose whatever you want. It, it should be relevant though if anything that you could look at as a religion you could look at video games because they are a form of uh literature that has a community a very strong community with symbols and representations and so forth um so you know you could talk about these things as new religious movements or you can um just you know you could just go into a very um, traditional research paper about one concept uh you know uh, you could just do Christianity in the way. Uh, you could just do Buddhism in China. You know, you could do a very specific uh, ritual or practice. Uh, you guys can do anything. Um, just, um, you know, let me know. Let me know your what you're going to choose, uh, what your subject is going to be, so I can make sure to tell you if it's if it's narrowed enough, if it's if it's worthy. And yeah, I look forward to um, doing your portfolios, which are going to be due here pretty soon and, and later your final papers. So um, all right, you guys. Aloha.